right, uh, welcome to this biology skills unit introduction to biochemistry lecture. In this lecture, we are going to be talking about the learning target number five, <clears throat> which asks you to be able to name the six elements that make up the majority of organic matter and describe the functions of organic macromolecules. This really is an introduction to a bunch of material that you're going to hear repeated throughout this trimester. But for this learning target, all we're going to ask you to be able to do is to name them and describe them. Later on, you're going to need to know more and be able to apply the different principles of the different macromolecules and um, explain how they're created and what they're shaped like and things like that. But for now, we want you to name and describe. You guys uh, are going to create a note sheet in your notebook for this. Instead of having one that's already taped in, you're going to take a blank piece of pa page in your notebook. You're going to write biochemistry introduction. It'll have a page number. Then you're going to draw a line down the left-hand side of the page, and you're going to put these three statements in there, about spaced out about like this. So what are the six elements of life, using symbols and words? What do cells do with the elements of life? And those can be close together, okay? And then the last one is list the four macromolecules and describe their function. And that should give you, you should have about two thirds of the space for that last one, maybe not quite that much. Um, and this is what your note sheet should look like. The first question you need to answer on that note sheet is, relates to the six elements of life. If you don't remember what an element is, uh, please go back and review this on the BioSkills Background Builder on Biochemistry. That was a lot of Bs, the BioSkills Background Builder on Biochemistry. Anyway, the, uh, this is in your notes. It uh, is where you're listing all the key vocabulary words for this whole unit on the biology skills. And you have one where we talk about um, elements and as well as some of the other words that I'm going to use going through here like monomer and polymer. So you may want to refer to that list of vocabulary as we're doing this. You need to know what the six elements of life are. If you think about the periodic table of elements, you guys have studied this probably in your, um, class, your science class last year. Um, we've got a list of all the major elements with uh, numbers that tell us how many atoms they, or uh, excuse me, how many electrons and protons they carry in their atomic mass as well as their symbol. The six elements that we're concerned with are these purple ones here, non-metals, as well as this one up here, hydrogen. These are the six elements that make up living things. And the primary ones are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And the convenient thing about each of these is that the chemical symbol for them is the first letter of the word. So C is carbon, H is hydrogen, O is oxygen. Some minor elements that are still very important for living things that we all need include nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Without these six elements, C-H-O-N-P-S, we could not have living things. We're going to spend most of our time thinking about carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but I have a way of remembering them where I put them in this order, and I say all living things are made of chnops, C-H-N-O-P-S. Those are the six elements of life. So life takes those six elements and turns them into organic molecules. And the word organic simply means that it is of or pertaining to living things. Um, organic molecules include things like this. This is a um, kind of a modified ball and stick model of a one kind of organic molecule called glucose. And it's made up of hydrogen atoms, carbon atoms, and oxygen atoms. And in this diagram, the, let's see if I can find a little uh, pen here. The hydrogen atoms are in white, the carbon atoms are the black ones here, and the oxygen atoms are the red ones right here. And so you'll see there's several oxygen atoms, several carbon atoms, which that line just disappeared, and several oxygen atoms. 
Okay, but it's these elements that build this molecule. Okay. Now, this is a monomer. It's one unit. A monomer is one unit of something that builds a much larger thing called a polymer. More often, when we're talking about polymers, we're going to talk about macromolecules like this one here. Notice it contains the same basic things. We still have hydrogen, okay? Our white ones right here and here. We still have oxygen, the red ones here and here, and we still have carbon, right? These black ones here and here. And before, I didn't want my lines to disappear, but now I do. That's kind of convenient. Um, this is a polymer. It's made up of many small units. If you see this ring here, you'll see repeating rings here. And they're all connected together to create a macromolecule. This happens to be a macromolecule called a carbohydrate. And now at this point, if you've been following along, you should be on that bottom part on the note sheet. So you should have answered the first two questions. We're now going to go through the major macromolecules of life. There are four of them. You'll need to know their names and their functions. So I already told you about the carbohydrate. There is that carbohydrate again. It's a long chain of glucose molecules. And its function in the body, the, reason, the main reason that we have carbohydrates is to store energy. They have some secondary functions, um, like building parts of cell membranes and stuff. But the primary one that we'll, you'll be interested in, in this class is that carbohydrates are an energy source. The second type of macromolecule that you'll be responsible for knowing about is called a protein. Okay. You'll notice that a lot of these words, by the way, are words that we use when we talk about what's in our food. We talk about how many carbs there are for carbohydrates or how much protein there is. That's because we get the raw materials for building these macromolecules from our food. So we need to know how much of them are in our food so that we can build ourselves. So proteins have a lot of functions in our body. Proteins are something that we're going to talk about a lot. Most people associate proteins only with muscle, um, but proteins do all the work of a cell. They're extremely important. The building blocks of proteins look something like this. This is a, a picture of uh, one of the building blocks of proteins called tryptophan. This is what makes you tired after you eat a lot of turkey after Thanksgiving. And tryptophan has a lot of carbon and oxygen and, and hydrogen like everything else. But you see those little blue ones right here. Those are nitrogen molecules. And proteins get put together to build these large, complicated chains that look like this extremely big molecules that the body puts together to do all different kinds of work. This one, the job of this is to make an opening in your cells so that things can get in and out. And you see it's shaped like what it's supposed to do. This is a pore protein or an, a uh, channel protein. And this open area in here looks like a donut is where things get in and out of the cell. So proteins do work in the cell. All right, our third kind of macromolecule is a nucleic acid. We see one spinning right here. The most common one people think about is DNA, and this is a structure of DNA. Um, here's another up-close diagram showing the kind of the ball and stick model with your carbon and hydrogen. And here's some of the building blocks that they pulled out those monomers. Okay, the function of nucleic acids in our body is to store the information that's used to build life. That's its main idea. We're going to spend a lot of time, particularly in the second trimester, talking about nucleic acids, how they're built, and what they do for your body. Another kind of macromolecule is known as lipids. And sometimes um, you'll hear us call these fats. That's a terrible A, but fats. So. Um, the function of lipids in your body, they're shaped something like this, is to form membranes. They're really important in maintaining homeostasis, uh, one of those characteristics of life, because you need a membrane to create an inside and an outside environment, and it separates the inside from the outside. Again, we'll talk a lot more about this at the beginning of trimester two and the end of this trimester. Um, a secondary role of lipids, of fats, is the one that most of us think of when we think of fat on our body, is as an energy storage. Most people want to get rid of fat and they try to burn their fat, burning up their energy. Um, but um, for the purposes of this class, we're mostly going to talk about lipids and fats as a membrane.